the Robinson annulation going to be the topic of this lesson. And that word annulation's got a couple of common accepted spellings, so I chose one. So if yours is different, now you know why. Uh, and in the Robinson annulation, we got two major steps. We got a Michael reaction first, followed by an intramolecular aldol second. So we covered both these reactions earlier in the chapter, including the very last lesson was the Michael reaction. And the reason we covered that, Michael, was really to set it up for this Robinson annulation. Now, we have covered both these earlier, and they're both a little bit complicated, which makes the Robinson even more complicated. So, but hopefully we've kind of laid the foundation early in this chapter for both these that this won't seem so bad. And, and the truth is our treatment of it here is going to be fairly brief. All right, so as we stated in the intro here, the first step is going to be a Michael reaction. Convenient for us, it is the same Michael reaction we studied in the last lesson. So make this a little bit easier. First step, NaOH, we're just going to form the enolate. We're going to deprotonate the alpha carbon here, forming that lovely enolate. I'm just going to draw this minor resonance contributor. And, uh, but that's our Michael donor. And then our conjugated ketone here in step two, that's our Michael acceptor, the electrophile. And uh, we're going to do our Michael reaction, attack that beta carbon. Uh, and rather than show kind of the exact way this works, I like to just kind of when I'm predicting the product, is draw the way it, it kind of gives me the quickest route to the product. And so we're just going to show the minor contributor to that enolate that we form here instead of the major. It makes it a little easier to predict your products. All right, so we've got this species, and then we've attached one, two, three, four carbons. So one, two, three, four carbons. Uh, and in this case, we've got uh, a ketone still, one from the end right here. And then on this carbon, we've formed an anion so and that's an enolate notice it's resonance stabilized with the oxygen so but eventually net result is that carbon is going to get protonated and just give you this result at the end of your Michael reaction. So, so there's the end of our Michael reaction. And then we've got to consider step two here an intramolecular aldol when we add sodium hydroxide with heat. And in this case we've got several enolizable hydrons in, in a lot of different locations here. We've got enolizable hydrons here, 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 and here. So lots of different enolizable hydrons that the sodium hydroxide could deprotonate uh, to form the enolate anion that could then attack one of the other ketones in the molecule. And so the most likely one, the most acidic one, is this guy right here. So if we deprotonate him and consider that first, so you might recall with your intramolecular aldol reaction, a five or six member ring is left. So it's smaller or larger than that, not so likely. And in this case, uh, he's an enolate with both these carbonyls. So the only one he can attack is this one over here. That would just form a one, two, three, four membered ring. That's not going to happen. So we don't have to consider him. We'll rule him out. So next one I'm going to consider is this one, because I know he's going to have the same problem. And so if we form his enolate by deprotonating him. So again, he's uh, an enolate with this carbonyl, so we could attack either one of these two, and that would just be a one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four member ring, and that's not going to be likely either, so we can rule him out. Now, if you notice, due to symmetry, these enolizable hydrons are equivalent, so I don't have to consider both of them. I just got to consider one of them. It'll lead me to the same result either way. So I'm going to erase one of them, take it out of the running. So, but in this case, I could consider forming the enolate here and attacking this carbonyl, and that would be a one, two, three, four, five, six membered ring. Or I could consider deprotoning this hydrogen, forming the enolate here, and attacking either one of these carbonyls, which again, doesn't really matter which one I choose uh, due to symmetry. So I'll just choose this one, it's easier to see, and that would be a one, two, three, four, five, six membered ring as well. So now we've got, in principle, two different routes to go. Uh, they're gonna lead us to at least two different products, as we'll see. So let's start with this one. Let's deprotonate here. And then we're going to do nucleophilic attack here. Now let's see what that leads to. And in this case, we're going to form a six membered ring, we said. And I just like numbering the carbons in the new ring I form as kind of reference to help me draw the products. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we're just going to draw a six membered ring here. And in this case, with these being one, two, three, to make it easiest to match up, I'm going to kind of draw them as one, two, three here as well. And you guess you could really do it any way you want to, but if it's easiest to visibly kind of match things up, we'll go that way ourselves. So uh, in this case, carbon two still is a ketone, and then carbon three is still bonded to this ketone that's not part of the ring. Uh, and then carbon six here is still gonna have a methyl group coming off, so out here outside the ring. But carbon six initially is gonna end up with that single bond to oxygen that's gonna get 
protonated. So, but when we heat this up, if you recall, we're going to lose a hydrogen. So from the alpha carbon, and then we're going to lose the OH from this would be the beta carbon and form an alkene right here as well. And so in this case, product becomes this lovely uh, conjugated enone or alpha beta unsaturated uh, carbonyl here. Cool, so that's one option. So we've got one other option to consider here. Instead of forming this enolate here, start over. And we'll deprotonate this hydrogen over here and form this enolate instead. And again, whether we attacks this carbonyl or this carbonyl, same diff either way. So this one's easier to kind of see. And once again, we're going to form a one, two, three, four, five, six membered ring as well. And once again, I like numbering those one, two, three, four, five, six to kind of make my life easier. So and with one and two in these positions, I'm going to kind of match that up once again, just to make it easier to see. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, and in this case, now carbon two still has this carbonyl group over here. So carbon one is now going to have just that single bond oxygen. Carbon one also is going to have another methyl group, not part of the ring. Uh, and then finally, carbon five here, also a ketone still as well. Uh, and that's looking pretty good. So in this case, on carbon number one, that's the oxygen that's become, going to become an OH. But again, we're going to lose that OH as part of a leaving group, and then we'll lose a hydrogen from an alpha carbon. Well, in this case, we actually have two different options because we have an alpha carbon relative to this carbonyl right next door, but we also have an alpha carbon relative to this carbon right next door as well. And so we actually could form the alkene in either one of these two positions to get an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. And so this is actually going to lead us to two places. So we'll just kind of draw them out as well. And so once again, I could form the alkene on that side still have a carbonyl over here and I think we're good there but I could also form the alkene on this side having the carbonyl over there cool so we've got a multitude of different products here these three different possible products uh, and in this case they all formed an alkene here we might just look for the most substituted alkene so if we look at this one here, the first one, we had one, two, three carbon stitches. It's tri-substituted. This one right here is one, two, three, four. So tetra-substituted. And this one back to being just tri-substituted, one, two, three carbons. Uh, so the tetra-substituted probably is going to be the most stable and therefore probably the major product in this case. Cool, but you're probably going to get a fair amount of all three of these, probably just a little more of this guy. That is your Robinson annulation. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? One of the best things you can do to make sure other students get to see this lesson as well. If you're looking for the study guide that goes to this lesson, if you are looking for practice problems on these alpha substitution reactions, if you are looking for my final exam rapid reviews that I've been coming out with lately, uh, these are all included in my premium course at chadsprep.com.